I guarantee you this series will dominate its season when it's released. Why? Oh, you'll see. This series is honestly a pretty fresh read. I mean, the premise of having one or more characters hiding a secret like this isn't in and of itself new. However, the interactions and the way these characters are written is almost perfect, with each character fulfilling an integral part of the plot. The story was written by Tatsuya Endo, who, apologies if I've butchered his name, mainly does one-shots. So this is actually quite impressive for him to produce an engaging story without as much experience as his competitors. Once again, please click off if you already intend to read this as there's no need to read the first chapter, which is 70 pages or so through a YouTube video. For those staying, we'll be mainly looking at panels from the first two or three chapters, but of course I won't talk about anything important. Anyway, without further ado, let's take a look at the first chapter and some of the characters' introductions. The opening monologue starts off strong, telling us that in this world, we all have some secret or other that no one other than ourselves will ever know. Also, keep this panel in mind for later. I'm not going to talk about it. You can connect the dots yourself. There's a dark room filled with politicians signifying shady underworld dealings or actions. They mention a war against the East and agree that they need to infiltrate and spy on them. Thus, they send their best agent, a man named Twilight. We cut to an actual shady dealing of a picture of a foreign minister wearing a hairpiece. In the case of Deja Vu, however, <laughs> the dealer sees his client again, asking for the photograph. And it's then that we see the greatest spy in the West, Twilight. Just barely after finishing his mission, he gets a new one that carries significant importance as this world's peace may hinge on this mission. He has to get close to his target, but he needs to make a family. The reason being, the target is extremely suspicious of others and operates behind the scenes. And he only appears at his son's elite private school. His deadline is seven days, and he loses his school. But after remembering his reason for doing this whole spy thing, he cements his resolve to make the world a better place. He then gets himself an apartment under the name of Lloyd Forger, a psychiatrist. Realizing there's no way in hell he can have a child within a week, he resorts to adoption. It is there we meet the would-be second member of the family, Anya. She is apparently smart, which attracted Lloyd to her, and also the owner of the orphanage is creeped out by her and sees this as a chance to get rid of her. Her physical attributes don't seem desirable to Lloyd, but as he thinks this to himself, Anya responds as if he asked her. To prove her intelligence, Anya grabs a crossword puzzle to complete in front of Lloyd. She solves it almost as fast as Lloyd does. Obviously, Lloyd did not hesitate to choose her as his new daughter, thinking that the mission was accomplished and going smoothly. She hears this, however, and we finally know why this girl is so strange. She's a telepath. He then tells her how to act and she instantly ignores him. She holds his hand, then she instantly regrets it, running to hide. She reads Lloyd's mind again and she believes that she is the key to world peace. She starts crying because Lloyd is thinking about exchanging her for another child, and he bribes her. Lloyd gets some, just some material on child rearing and skims through it, learning some basics about raising a child. But he isn't convinced with what's written, saying that he'll get rid of her in the future. It's important to note that Anya is asleep through this and presumably did not hear this world-shattering thought. Anya gets kind of bored and decides to snoop around her dad's stuff. She plays with the radio, sending messages to someone. And that someone is none other than the person Lloyd ripped off in his last mission. Lloyd comes home to find his makeshift barricade he used to keep Anya home has been moved. And I'm just going to let you read the rest. After catching his breath, he finds out that Anya had been kidnapped and goes to rescue her. Twilight threatens the man's daughter and gives him a chance at living the rest of his life in peace. So now that the fam is back together, they get an envelope from Eden Academy stating that both parents must be present for the family interview. Enter the wife, a normal woman, yeah she's an assassin, and uh, a pretty badass one at that, hunting down traitors to her country and uh, her code name. Thorn Princess. She's been an assassin since a young age, doing only what her employer asks her to do. Anyway, Twilight and the assassin meet, and after some idle chit chat, Anya reads her mind, shocking herself with the situation she's found herself in. Anyway, she tries to push these two together in s su subtle, s subtle, subtle ways. 
and uh, they decide to speak about an arrangement regarding bringing Lloyd to a party under the guise of her boyfriend. Fast forward to the party and Lloyd is late, causing some of the other partygoers to badmouth Yor, the assassin. Her mind goes to some dark places, but after holding herself back, she starts to leave the party. Just then, the Giga Chad, Lloyd, barges in with a bloody face, announcing that he is Yor's husband, uh, but he's supposed to be her, her boyfriend. Anyway, he praises and compliments Yor, and after that, they find themselves under attack, and Lloyd proposes to her under the blood and limbs, sweat and tears of their enemies. And uh, they both say their vows. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's it. Oh, also there's a uh, trailer for the anime adaptation out. Here's a few clips of the trailer to avoid copyrights. And uh, yeah, if you want to watch the whole thing, links in the description. Thank you, I hope you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm.